All right, so we have our platform game, okay? It scrolls behind us. We collect a certain amount of coins. I believe it's 10. Oh, great. Okay, and then I can usually fall through this. Yep. Okay, so then if I collect a certain amount of coins, 10 coins, the world, the world stops, okay? So let me actually do this for you guys so you guys don't call me a cheater anymore. All right. Okay. Okay, so now my world has stopped after 10 coins. Okay, but what if I want to make it so that uh, at 10 coins in the very center, let's see, what is this, inspect at about 1950 and 450, there's going to be a door that pops up that if we go into this door, we go on to the next level. Okay, so if I want to do that, first I want to make, uh, go to my play, yeah, Wilkins. along with the platform, yeah, with the then you'd have to do, if you're intersecting, you'd have to go into the platform code and put it, get one object at offset, you know how, to, how we do that, okay, and you'd have to say, set location, get one object at offset, and then put it however many above that object. Does that make sense? So right now, that's, that's pretty complicated. So I don't think that would be for everybody, but I can try to show you guys how to do that at a different time. Um, but yeah, let's just put it at one spot kind of in the middle so that you're able to reach it. Um, so if you go into your player, you have this if collect 10 greenfoot.stop. We need to change this. So if you collect 10, we're not going to stop. We are going to add in a new object. A new door. Okay, so remember whenever we're adding or removing an object, we have to call it from the world class because we're adding or removing an object from the world. So you have to say get world, similar to just like up here when you remove uh, coins and collect coins and stuff. Um, add object instead of remove object. And then we need to create our, our class. Okay, so we need to create our door. So let's go into, we got a lift that looks kind of like a door that I like to use for our secret door. Okay, then we go back into our player and we add object new secret door and you got to put the location of it and what, if you remember in about 1950, to the X value and then the Y value will be 450. Okay, close parentheses, compile. Always remember to add the semicolon. All right, so it's compiled. Looks like everything's working out well. So now when we collect 10, instead of game over, a new secret door will appear. Now what, what do you guys see as an issue here that many people have run into. Did anyone spot an issue here? What, what's going to happen? What is about to happen that is an issue that will happen in our game? Great. Okay. That's one. That's very good. Okay. What else? There's a problem in this line, these lines, last few lines of code that would happen that would Maybe you could get to your door, but it probably takes you. Yeah, Willis. That's an issue. That could be an issue. So if you collect 10 and 11 really fast, maybe it wouldn't wouldn't read it, and it would you wouldn't have the secret door pop up. But what if you just collect 10? What's going to happen?
continue making a secret door over and over. And you know how fast Greenfoot runs. It runs 60 times per second. So you're going to have 60 doors in one second. So eventually that will lag out your game and you'll, you'll, uh, you'll, it'll, it'll crash. Yeah. I like that. I like that idea. So Chet has done different than what we've done in the past, but it's a great idea. Just spawn a gold coin on top of yourself so you go from 10 to 11 immediately. Okay, what else can we do? Yeah, Drake. Right, so creating a Boolean that says, so we cr create Booleans at the top of our screen, so we create a Boolean. That is a true-false statement. Okay, so Boolean, um, 10 coins collected. So that's going to start off equal to false because we don't have 10 coins collected. Okay, so then we go down. If you collect 10 coins and 10 coins collected was equal to false, okay, so we're adding in, remember this is our, if we want to add in two different conditions into one if statement, you have to put an and, and do you guys, anybody remember where the or, how you uh, put in or, yeah. Shift and then what is it? Where is it above? Do you know what, what? It's above or below? It's by the backspace. It's by the backspace. So it's this right in between enter and the backspace on the far right. Okay. Chat, Jackson, up here, please. Okay. So what else? What's the last thing we have to add here? So we've created a Boolean that if it's false, it will create a secret door. But how do we make it so that secret door will only happen once? Set it to true. So now we have 10 coins collected. After it adds in the door, it'll do the very next line of code, which the next line of code, we're going to make it add to change to true. And then so now that this Boolean is true, it will not happen again because we've said if it o will only happen if it's 10 coins have been collected and it's equal to false. Okay, so now that's compiled. Everything's set up for us. So now let's see. See if I can get to 10 coins. I'm going to stay on the top level so I don't fall all the way to the bottom. That looks like a good bunch I just missed over there. I know, yeah. Okay, have I collected 10 yet? No one's counted. What's the problem, though, that Trey said at the very beginning? Or no, who, it's Willie said at the very beginning. Excuse me. The door will not move. We've we've put on all this code for the platformer and the coins, and then you forget that the door will not move. So the door's been probably hanging out over here for a while. Okay, so we need to make sure we go into the door, and we can actually copy and paste the code that we have for the. Let's copy and paste the code we have for the ground. Okay. So we copy this code so that it will also happen for the secret door. And then now, I am going to make it easy on myself and just put 10 coins that I collect immediately. Fourteen. The doors popped up, so now I run, hit the door, the door moves, okay? The last thing you need to do is have something happen when you hit the door, okay? So, in your player, whoops, hit the ground. All right, in your player, you have your collect, which is very similar to when you run into something. Okay, so we can copy some of this code, create a new method, 
Public void. Uh, second level. Okay, if you copy and paste this code, but you make actor equal to secret door instead of coin, so you replace secret door where coin was. And secret door class. Okay, so if, remember, you guys are very, we've done this plenty of times, so what is this saying right here? What is this asking the computer? If, no, it's not, not yet. If what? If player is intersecting, so if you're in the player class, so this is if you're intersecting a coin, what do you do? You remove the coin and you add to your select. Start counting on your select variable. Okay, and then this, if the player is running into the secret door, what do we want to do? What did I say we wanted to do? A new world. So we want to set, it's gonna, we're gonna set um, we are going to set our new world. Okay, so how do you think we do that? Okay, so how did we do that with objects? You're right, you're, you're on the right track. So if we wanted to add a new object in, like we just learned in the platform game, you would do greenfoot dot add object. Okay, and so now we're gonna do greenfoot dot set world. And we're gonna tell it what world we wanna set. A new background to okay so greenfoot dot set world what world okay well we need to pick out of the classes that we have I could have done start screen or background two and then now once you hit the secret door you will go into background two now I don't have anything in background two you guys are welcome to make um, whatever you would like in your second world and you can you you can use the second world the exact same and Let's inspect make sure we're at 10. Yeah, I'm at 11. So the secret door should be Should be up and Let's see this work Okay Okay, what did I forget to do I now I know what I forgot to do call it in the act method the most <laughs> Classic thing you can do wrong. So remember, this is just instructions, okay, until you call it into action into the act method. Okay? Always, always remember that. Calling it into the act method. Okay, now I'm gonna cheat once again and just put a secret door right here to make us go into background two. So now I have background two. If you guys want if you're trying to design stuff in background two, all you need to do is it's paused right now. You just right click and say new start screen and it'll pop so you can jump in between all these backgrounds. So let's say I wanted to start with the start screen. I could just do if, if greenfoot dot is key down. So if you're pushing one, one key down and let's say it's space, then do the same thing. Greenfoot dot set world new new background so let's just we can do this right here real quick okay so create an act method if greenfoot dot is key down space so if the space key is down okay we can do that same thing greenfoot dot set world and now, what world are we going to set? New, just that first background. So now what we have, open close parentheses. Now what we have is the ability to start on a start screen, which we can design. We can put words in here and stuff. So if we start on start, if I compile this, we're starting on the start screen. Then I push space. I jump into my background world. Okay. Then I put a secret door in, 
and then I jump into the second level. So now essentially I've created three different worlds that you guys can easily jump in between. Okay, and this is all I have this all recorded um, for video for you guys, so you guys can kind of go back and look at anything we've talked about. All right, anybody have any questions? Okay, that last part I went a little a little fast on, but it's important. So remember, greenfoot dot set world, and then you just put new background to put the open close parentheses so it knows that that is the end of a like end of a end of the world. Okay, the end of the world. Okay, that's the end of the statement that you're making. Yeah. So why does the world start to be different from the other ones? Is it saying that it's a different world now that it's not the actual open site? Is it always going to be the actual world and not the the background? Yes. Do you want to start over? definitely do that. So if you touch the, if I had a door at the beginning of the world and the end of the world, you could jump in between each world. Yes, you can do that. So you could just go back and say, I want to go back to level one or I want to jump. Now I'm in level two. I want to jump forward to level three. So I'll touch a different door. I'm just telling you that. Yeah, good question. Okay, anybody else? 